So in the previous episode I showed you how to solve this uh, problem in Excel using a standard format for linear programming, right, where we have objective and constraints in uh, each in one line. But of course you can solve it in a very different way, in, in many different ways actually, but one, one interesting way is to, to just uh, solve it uh, using instead of using some product functions, use use uh, w you know uh, uh, other other functions because you see when the sum pro when you have the sum products, what was quite tedious is putting those one minus one coefficients, right? And it's difficult and it's prone to errors. If you make a mistake in one of the coefficients, all your flows, the net flows, will not be balanced, and uh, you know this uh, this might cause uh, errors in the solution. So so how do we put it? Uh, to, to in such a way that we avoid those kind of mistakes. Well, what you can do is you can you can create the following model. You can say I will have the flow right, the flow variable here, and I will say from which node to which node right. So I will have a w if you remember we had eleven variables. So I should have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I should have eleven flow variables, and then I will list from where to where they are. And of course, I will list them exactly as the variables are said here. So it's fl from one to node two, from node one to node four, and then there is from node two to no to node three, from node three to node five, from node five to node three. Uh, from node 5 to node 4 and so on. So I have them here and, and the, the last thing I will put here is the unit cost, right? Uh, and the unit cost unit cost, if of course I again have to enter all the numbers so for from node 1 to node 2 the cost per unit is $30 then it is $40 and so on. So now that I have costs and flows I can uh, define the total cost, right? Total total value here will be some product of those unit costs and the flows. I don't need to put a four because I won't be copying this function. So here is my one function, uh, the total cost. But what about the net flows? So now uh, we need to define the net flows and uh, you see the information about variables is now is different. It's not x12 entered. It's it, there is a, a separate index for node from and a separate index for node 2. So how do I how can I how can I use this information? Well, I can say uh, I want um, for each uh, node which will be 1 2, right? I can again drag this right bottom corner down to create numbers from 1 to 7, I need a net flow uh, uh, formula which is inflow, right, or I'll say inflow in minus out, inflow minus outflow, right, this is the net flow formula, and how is it going to be calculated? Well, I have to now figure out a way to take as inflow all those variables, right, F that are inflows to node 1 and f as out all those variables that are outflows from node 1. How do I do this? How can I do this? Well, the, it, it happens that there is a very nice function which is called sum if. Okay? It's a little bit complicated but you'll see uh, it is actually easier than, than, uh, than initially it looks. Uh, sum if adds uh, variables that s satisfy a certain criteria. So first First, what we what we say is in what range we want to test for something, and if if you're thinking there will be first some if for the inflow. So for the inflow, we want to test when the second index is equal to one, right? Inflow is when this index is equal to one. Well, actually there isn't, but I have to enter this formula. So I want to say this range. And I, because I'll be copying it down, I don't want to change this range, so I'll press F4 here. If this range, comma, is equal to this index 1, right? So if in this range there is index equal to this, that means this is a variable that is an inflow. So I have to take a corresponding uh, cell from this range. And again, I have to press here F4 because when I copy it down, I don't want to change this uh, reference. I want to keep it fixed. I don't want to move the reference down, uh, increase the, the, the row or column uh, index by anything, right? So that sum if should give me the 
sum of all variables in this range that satisfy the condition in this range there is a number equal to this g3 which is 1 right and then this is inflow I still have to uh, uh, write outflow and outflow will be right I have to put minus and again I put sum if and what, what do I want for outflow in outflow I have to have the from index so in this range right the first uh, um, first argument is a range again click F4 to have this range um, uh, never change right uh, the, the reference never change if this range contains index 1 which is this uh, reference right and then there is here and here then I want to take corresponding cells from the variables again I select the same reference and press F4 right so basically what this says is check in this range in the from index if there is value from this cell which is 1 and take corresponding values from the third range here and just add them when you had one here add those variables right so that you see will give me a correct outflow so it will calculate inflow there won't be any variables that have index here one so there won't be any inflow but for node one there is outflow here outflow here this is a variable x12 and x14 1214 and you see there will be a correct outflow calculated by this formula I close the parenthesis now you might say this is complex right but the advantage of this is that once you write this formula correctly once you can even copy it from your older spreadsheet right uh, then um, then th there is no way uh, to make certain types of mistakes that you can easily make while you type those 1 minus 1 coefficients because now this net flow let's see if it works if I put um, or actually let's copy it down now right because I, I this is the same formula now I can I can copy or, or drag it down by the right bottom corner here and you'll see if I put all the dollars correctly now what it is saying inflow is if in this range there is index 2 add those variables and that's inflow right inflow to 2 is here x12 this variable only and then the second sum if says even this range which is here the from index there is 2 which is here only then add those variables so just take this variable right and so you'll have inflow minus outflow let's see if it works let's say if I shift if I ship 5 units from node 1 to node 2 then you'll see inflow minus outflow in node 1 in node 1 there is a minus 5 units of net flow right so that means well it why is it because we're taking from node 1 5 units so the the net flow the balance is minus 5 in node 1 and you can see this plus 5 in node 2 because we're we're taking those new units from 1 to 2 so it looks like it is correctly calculating let's just uh, try for example if i take two, from node 2 to node 3 uh, two units right if it is correct now you see I'm delivering to node 2 5 units but I'm taking further 2 more units so what is left in node 2 is 3 and those 2 units that I took out of node 2 I delivered to node 3 so here the balance is plus 2 as you can see this works like a net flow or inflow minus outflow as it should now all I need to put is <coughs> is this bi right the right hand side or bi values here again as before for each node so it's minus 200 plus 100 60 80 170 70 and minus 300 and I'm ready to actually solve the problem so I will go to data solver and I will say minimize this cost by changing flow variables subject to um, the net flows inflow minus outflow as we agreed before it's greater than or equal to right uh, the right hand sides and then non negativities for flows minimum value for each of them is zero click OK uncheck this select simplex LP method this is a linear problem and click solve and solver found the solution all constraints and con optimality conditions are satisfied and you see we have exactly the same solution as before if you consider those variables exactly the same values and the same total cost uh, is, is found so we have the same solution as before um, I can also ask to generate answer and sensitivity reports and you'll see there are actually sensitivity and answer 
answer reports and sensitivity information like shadow prices. This is still a linear programming problem. There are reduced costs, there are allowable increases, decreases, all of those we can use, right? And uh, so again, what, what is the optimal solution? As, it's, uh, as, as we can see, we ship from node 1 120 units to Boston and 80 units to Richmond. And from those 120 shipped to Boston, 20 is taken further to node 3 to Columbus. So you see actually 100 stays in Boston and 20 goes here. So Columbus still needs 40 more units here. And you'll see that from node 7 we ship to node 5 to 10. That's to Atlanta, 210. That's 40 too much. But then from node 5 we ship to node 3. 40 units. So the 40 too much that was delivered here to 10. 170 stays and 40 goes on to Columbus and then there is also 70 shipped from Jacksonville to Mobile. So you see the, the solution works, all the net flows uh, are the, the flows are the nodes are uh, net flows in nodes are in balance with supply demand and we have the, the total cost minimized and the total cost is now $22,350. So in a sense we found <coughs> for this uh, company the minimum cost uh, transportation plan for those uh, 480 cars in total. So I hope you see from this demonstration uh, that uh, th there are two ways to solve this this problem, right? Or uh, at least I showed you two ways. There are multiple ways, um, and you can solve it either the way you you like. You can use the first version of the model where you have uh, uh, standard format as for any linear programming model. The problem is only that you have to be very careful when you enter those one plus one minus one coefficients in all constraints or you can use the second uh, variant right which is actually a much more natural and business kind of uh, bu uh, business oriented where you see all your connections are listed here as from two nodes the costs are listed we can put dollars and other things and then the net flows here are just for the constraints uh, the only complication here is that you have to be able to write this sum if minus sum if function for inflow minus outflow but both models work uh, the same they both give correct solutions and therefore you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you know uh, the, the, whether your, your your approach is correct or not whether you like the first model or the second model both work correctly <coughs>